Hey everybody, this is Kevin and welcome to a revealing of a brand new product from Estes. And this goes right along with the Saturn V and the NASA SLS. But this is the brand new ready to fly space shuttle, 1-200 scale. And this is literally how it came packaged in the box. I wasn't going to do an unboxing video, uh, I was just going to kind of do a reveal video. But it came in this uh, tissue paper, very similar to the way that the uh, SpaceX Falcon 9 came wrapped. So with this you know, white kind of tissue paper, I'm like, you know, that's kind of a cool revealing look to it. So let's do it on camera. So let's, well, I think I'm just going to shred it. Not much saving there, but this is cool. This has been a long awaited item. I've been waiting quite a while for this. And I got one in. Let's take a look. Here it is, the first look at it. Oh, that is too cool. You know what? That's actually smaller than I actually thought it was going to be. I thought the uh, the the stack was going to be more reminiscent of the um, SLS size, but that's that's almost miniature looking. Um, I wonder what do they call for engines on this? They say. Wow, a C5 or C63 engine. Okay, well, hmm. That's a little rocket for that that size of a booster. My goodness. Okay, well. All right, let's uh let's go ahead and get into it and see what it looks like up close and personal. But no, my initial thoughts are how tiny. Uh goodness. I don't know. That is really small. <laughs> I mean, that, that literally is, the orbiter is the size of my hand. That is really something. All right, let's get it out and see what what we got. I mean, it's very cool looking. Yeah, I can tell the orbiter is made of foam, which is kind of what I suspected since it's a glider. Let's get the accessories out of here. All right, looks like we get a little display stand. Okay, that's very reminiscent of the uh, the other two ready to flies. Okay, these are the fins, just like the SLS actually. And here's our, okay, they tell you to put weight in the nose, I'm assuming. Okay, so there's the parachute and some clay. I guess everything else is uh, is done. Let's, uh, how do we uh, snap these here? Let me get some scissors and I'm just gonna snip those. Uh, let's see, there's one down here too, I think. Yeah. Okay, oh, and there's, well, there's tape. I'm not sure what the tape is for. Oh, okay, this booster also has, okay. Is that enough to get the, yep, okay, here it comes. Nice little background picture. I'll give them credit for that. Okay, so the booster is initially taped. Look how small this thing is. <laughs> Goodness gracious, a C motor in this, unreal. And they're calling for 600 feet. I see this going a lot higher, to be honest with you. Okay, um, well, let's just see if we can't slide the tape off the nose there we go okay now let's see what holds this on okay just a little front hook i guess that's it does that fit no i guess that's it just uh that little hook right there so it just sort of dangles underneath not too secure on the bottom side there's no attachment down there. Huh, whoever put that uh, motor mount on is really crooked, unless, oh, it's made that way. Okay, I, I see. It was threaded on straight, but it comes out at a weird angle. Okay, interesting. And the nose cone, nice snug fit. Okay, it's already pre-mounted with the rubber goes up into the tube okay and I will say this I like how 
the unlike the SLS, these boosters don't protrude out into the tube at all. Uh, on the SLS, this upper mount goes through the tube and sticks out, and it, it would snag on the parachute. I should say the, the chute would snag on it. And I, I actually melted it down with a soldering iron, but uh, nothing to do here on this one. So that's good. Um, I'm just really surprised at how tiny this thing is for a C motor. If they told me this was made for half A's, I'd believe them. Okay, let's get that back in. Okay, so yeah, literally, and then I guess this just glides down. Um, I think you have to do some initial flight, you know, glide test with it. I'll just go out to some, the local park where there's some grass just to practice some glides with it. And uh, there we go. I guess the balance of it, it won't stand, I guess, without the stand. So let's go ahead and get that built. I, I hadn't planned on really opening. Oh, you know what? No, because once I get the fins in, it's going to stand on its on the fins. So I'm going to hold off. Um, okay, so my initial thoughts, tiny. Okay, I mean, look, this is, I have a normal size hand, and uh, <laughs> it's just itty-bitty. Can you imagine 600 feet trying to track this as it glides down? Um, that's going to put my camera work skills to, to, to the test. But uh, for scale purposes, I, I'm, I'm impressed. It's very, very clean looking. I just can't believe how wobbly that is. Oh, well, I guess it still doesn't matter. Still, yeah, still kind of wobbles. Huh. Okay, well, it is what it is. I assume this has been test flown quite a bit by Estes, so well, I guess I have to trust them. Um, I wonder if I should maybe lay some electrical tape or something down to protect that surface, especially where I fly in the rocks. That's going to get pretty dinged up on landing so i may uh, cover the base of that with some protective film of sorts so okay well there you have it there is the uh space shuttle i'm gonna put it like this so it doesn't fall over um initial thoughts like i said tiny <laughs> tinier than i thought when but it's gonna be a lot of fun it's just gonna be a hoot to get this thing out and fly and um tracking this won't be too difficult but i think tracking that with the camera is going to be a challenge so I think I'm going to focus on the orbiter. All right, guys. Well, next time I go fly, you will see this on the launch pad. So stay tuned for that. So thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.